Those are the two choices that are presented to people. You get laid off, you either move to a totally different plant. state or plant, mm -hmm. potentially hundreds of miles away. Yes. Or you're out of a job. Out of a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't seem right, does it? No. Kokomo is one of dozens of towns across America that have been gutted by corporate outsourcing. In 2017, GM's Delphi plant ceased production and closed down soon after, with the company saying that it would be cheaper to source parts from other companies, many of which are based abroad. Trish, a UAW shop steward at the Indiana Transmission Plant, took us to the closed plant to show us around. So when you have a plant closure, it's devastating for one. I mean, not only to the families and the employees, but also to the community. The community lost a lot of jobs. Right here okay? Yeah. We can go right in front of that. So everyone who worked here lost their jobs? Well, they lost their job and they got moved. They got moved to different plants. But when you're talking about moving a job, it's not like down the street. We're talking going to a town you've never known, no family, no support, and you're just kind of dropping them. You know, when you work in a, in a plant and it does close, you will see people, you know, men especially, living in trailers or in campers, you know, trying to, you know, offset that cost with having a home where your family is and still being able to provide for them. The GM plant produced semiconductor chips, which are essentially small computers that control the electronics in a car. Semiconductor chips are so crucial that modern cars won't function without them. In the last three years, the world experienced a major chip shortage, which caused a shortage of cars and ultimately the price of cars to skyrocket. Ironically, GM was a victim of the chip shortage themselves and had to store its chipless cars in the parking lot of the shuttered plant. So this plant could have been filled with could have been. good jobs, mm -hmm. employing people from the community, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. instead they just shut it down. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, we start, we, we did have the respirators going on during COVID, but since then, nothing. Yeah. In yeah. fact, the, the fact that they reopened a section of the plant to build respirators means that they, they're totally capable mm -hmm. of yes. bringing the plant mm -hmm. back and yes. employing thousands of employees. Yes. These mind-boggling contradictions make no sense to anyone who believes society's resources and productive capacity should be used to meet human needs, which includes the need for good jobs. But in a system where maximizing profit for the ultra-rich is the top priority, it makes more sense to close a plant, inflict a chip shortage on yourself and the entire country, and start importing chips from halfway around the world than to invest enough money to keep the plant down the street open. Companies like GM close plants solely to boost their profits, but this has forced more and more people in towns like Kokomo to survive on low paying and often part-time temp jobs or move elsewhere. In that sense, the UAW's contract fight is about more than just UAW auto workers, but about the preservation and expansion of good paying jobs as a whole. Corporate America wants to reduce all stable jobs into low paying gigified jobs and they see correctly that it's unions like the UAW that are standing in their way. How, how shameful is it that you're actually trying to buy groceries and can't, and you're working 40 hours a week, and you have to decide of whether your kid can play softball or um, baseball, or you've got to buy groceries that week? How sad is that? That's one of my big things. I hope with this fight that people see yeah. how valuable they are yeah. and know that they're, they are worth it.